Good morning. Welcome to our coffee morning. In these strange times, one of the most dubious pleasures has been to watch interminable repeats on TV. Many of us no doubt have a favourite genus of programme that we visit often. I know some people are fascinated by repeats of early soaps, with long forgotten characters popping up in plausibly youthful and embarrassingly memorable fashions. Frizzy perms, platform shoes, tank tops and shoulders. So cool then, weren't they? I will hazard a guess that amongst the favourites and most often watched of the detective series, from Sherlock Holmes through Poirot, Marple and Morse, they have a fascinating grip on us that encourages the makers of these things to churn them out by the barrel road. And why not? They are great fun and may even stretch our minds a bit as we try to solve the mystery before the denouement, at least for the first half dozen viewings. There are three main puzzles that usually exercise the detective. There's who done it, how did they do it, why did they do it. Sometimes they explore alternative theories. And out of a weaving of these propositions, whole careers are made. Who would have thought that they owe the fundamentals of this entire industry, in no small part, to a 14th century English cleric from a little village in Surrey? William of Ockham was a Franciscan friar, born, it is believed, in the village of Ockham in about 1285. He was an influential, if controversial, philosopher and theologian who studied at the University of Oxford. Many of his views were remarkably modern in their direction and were not universally accepted by the church in his day. But he was always prepared to defend his ideas with sound argument. Among the many who were influenced by him were Martin Luther, uh, John Wycliffe, who translated the Bible into English, and later philosophers such as Hobbes and Descartes. But the reason he is more generally remembered today is what we now call Occam's Razor, a philosophical device for getting to the truth. In essence, this argues that the right answer to a mystery is usually the simplest one. For example, you come across a broken fence. Now, one explanation could be that it was trampled by a cow who was looking for her little friend, the squirrel, but blundered into the fence in the dark because she left it very late. Alternatively, a nail fell out of the fence post because it was rotten. Now, which is the most likely explanation for the fence to fail? Hmm. For millennia, it was believed by those who studied such things that the Earth was at the centre of the universe and the peculiar uh, retrograde motion of the planets could be explained by some extremely complicated machinations. But then Copernicus came up with the idea that if all the planets were in fact in orbit around the Sun, it all became much simpler to explain these strange movements. In his version of Occam's Razor, Sherlock Holmes asserted that when you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. This seems to be the end game in most of the detective stories, even Columbo, when you usually he usually knows who done it from the start. His trick is to prove it. A fascinating character and powerful Christian thinker. William's ideas have lasted the test of time and have been a rewarding course of study for centuries, influencing thinkers of many disciplines. There's plenty to read about his work and his life to be found on the web, especially go, if you go beyond the usual wiki source, and, and I do commend, commend them to you. Well, thank you for listening and see you again next week. <laughs>